uh, roadmap for the activities of working group uh, three in the project. Now, we're going to be starting, as we said, around 2 o'clock. We have more than 30 people registered to come, um, with a high representation, I must say, from Greece, Spain, and Italy. And um, it will be um, the agenda, is you can see in the screen. The session today will be divided in three main blocks. We will first introduce you to our project. We will then uh, explain what the working group is about. We will propose several actions and events to do together. <clears throat> we'll break uh, for, a, for a rest in between. And then we will look into detail at the way we work together and how we're going to move forward with the actions proposed. Now, for your participation, you will see in the instructions you received that we're going to be using um, questions and answers to interact with you. Now, some of the questions you can raise through the chat itself. And some of the questions will be shown on the screen. And you will have to answer them through this software. So um, everybody else can also benefit from your uh, suggestions and recommendations. Now, which tools do you have in the room to use? Now, if you look in your screen, top left, you should be able to see a, a loudspeaker that is telling you about the volume, if it's heard or not. You should uh, see also a microphone that you can activate or disactivate if you want to speak to us rather than through the chat. You also have an icon for the camera. So um, once you click it, you will have a little window opening saying preview. You need to click again so for everybody else to see you. And then finally, the following button on the right of the camera one is an icon to raise your hand or uh, interact with the speaker saying to slow down or to speed up. So um, please feel free to use these kind of tools. Maybe for the ones that are already in the room, you can try and raise your hand, or maybe even applause if um, if you understood the instruction. Don't be shy. It's OK. It's not going to break if you press it. OK, someone did. Emmy, thank you. Yeah, you used the tool very well. Anyone else that can use the little applause tool on the top left? Do you get familiar with the settings? Christos, thank you. I see you're applauding. Well done. Anyone else? Top left. It like and with a person, several options, see if you can find the applause. Two spotted only. Gloria did. Well, Ifigenia did, thank you. Okay. And someone is saying hurry up. Antoine. Okay, yes. We have two minutes left to start the webinar, so um, well done. Yes, this is the use of the icon so we can see um, your needs or your suggestions for improving the flow of the information as it goes. I will also ask you to please, if possible, use headphones. Um, because uh, if you speak or even if you hear, um, and as the session is going to be recorded, it will help with the uh, sound level for um, later on uh, producing this webinar video for those that could not come. If you have problems not hearing the speakers, also please tell us through the chat or through the use of these little icons on the top left. I'm glad to see that we have more people entering the room now. So we have um, our colleague Carolina Perez from MedCities, partner in the project. Caterina Fortuna, also Marine Institute, Croatia, a partner in our project too. We have uh, Chara Agauklu from Greece. Um, uh, we, I hope we will have the opportunity to briefly introduce ourselves, maybe at least for a project represented in this webinar. That could be a good idea. Uh, Christos Papantos, Anatoliki, Chula Project, thank you very much. Eleni Neteka from PostBMed um, project, Emil Lindqvist also from uh, PostBMed project IUCN. We have Flavio that didn't introduce the name of the institution or the project, so that could help us um, later on to um, talk to you. Leonardo Tunesi from ISPRA, member of our advisory board. Thank you for coming. Vijola Lika and Stella Taroglu. Um, I need to practice my Greek. I see many names that are difficult to pronounce, but um, yeah, thank you everybody for being here. 
We also have a Serna Sudar that will help us also through the agenda and present some of the components. Serna is working for the uh, Ministry of Sustainable Development and Tourism in Montenegro. And now you can see um, a lovely face next to me. And, um, and our first speaker will normally be Dania Abdul Malak, which is the director of the European Topic Center of the University uh, of Malak. So Good afternoon. Yes, Dania, you're already here. Okay. Sorry, I didn't yeah. see you coming in. Yeah, welcome. Okay. Good. I'm I'm here and ready whenever you want. Okay. We it is one minute past two o'clock. I don't know if we want to allow for thirty seconds for the late arrivals, or we can be very punctual and start as we go. Okay. Thank you, Flavia, for telling us you are Tuna Project. Now we know more about you. Thanks. Okay, once more, as we go through the room, you can see also um, under the toolbar you have a little window showing three documents that you m are able to download if you um, don't have access to them directly. So you have the, frag the, the draft uh, fact sheet that includes our suggestions for common actions. You also have a background document that explains what happened in Panacea and what we're planning to do. With the, with the specifications on which kind of organizations and projects are in our community. And you also have the agenda that is currently on display in the center of the screen. So feel free to download this if you need to. Thank you, Rijola. You introduced yourself as Institute for Nature Conservation in Albania. Thank you for that. Under the downloadable um, files, you can also see certain recommendations on how to use them. Um, different tools and settings for these uh, online meetings. So feel free to explore around and, and apply these recommendations. And see, I'm wearing my headphones trying to isolate from the external sound. OK, we have 22 people. I think we are quite on time. Um, I would say, should we start with our first uh, speaker? It's going to be Dani, as I mentioned. And she's going to talk to us about what is the project about and what uh, we've been doing the past three years, too. Dania, please. So good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone hears me well and sees me as well. I think I shared my screen, well, the, my, my video, at least. Yes, and thank you, Manu, for projecting the, the PowerPoint presentation. So uh, very happy to welcome all of you uh, with us this afternoon. Uh, I saw from the participants list that we have uh, some new um, colleagues uh, that have joined. So uh, a warm welcome to everyone, and especially to the new ones, that I will dedicate a few minutes to recap on why we are here together uh, this afternoon. So uh, my name is Dania Abdelmelek, as, uh, as Sonsores kindly uh, presented me already. Um, I'm the coordinator of an initiative, um, actually, it is in its second phase. It has been going on since 2016. Uh, it's an Interreg Med funded um, initiative um, that is now called the Mediterranean Biodiversity Protection Community. Uh, by now, I mean the second phase that started since 2000, November 2019 and is ongoing until 2022. We previously were known as a project as Panacea. Maybe it sounds to, to some of you. Uh, event. So, um, so here we are today. Uh, it's it's a series of uh, several webinars. That's the third one that has been happening in this second phase, um, where we have presented uh, to mainly the community of projects engaged in the Interreg um, Met uh, program uh, under the biodiversity protection uh, access mainly but also to wider stakeholders, mainly our advisory board and associated partners that have been uh, very kindly and very much engaged with us throughout the processes. So, uh, so um, here, here we are in, uh, in a focused uh, webinar that's dedicated to one of our working groups. Um, that's, that's mainly focusing, as you see in the slide, on integrated ecosystem monitoring and, and management. Uh, we started uh, on uh, June 12, if I'm not wrong, uh, by presenting the overall strategy of the, of the two years to come uh, that, we, uh, that we plan to have. Um, last, 
Last week, we presented uh, what we plan to do under Working Group 1. That was more focused on biodiversity conservation and, uh, and transboundary challenges. Uh, today, we are in, the, in Working Group 3. And by this Friday, we will have also a webinar dedicated to Working Group 2 that's focusing on um, the sustainable use of natural resources in the Mediterranean. Very well. Uh, I will not go through the partnership. As you can see, the different logos uh, are up there. We have excellent uh, partnership of several networks and regional institutions, very dear colleagues with whom we have been contributing for years now. And we hope to be up to the level in these upcoming two years also to be, to be engaging you with us in these processes. Very well. Um, I will then move to the agenda. Uh, so, uh, so we have two uh, two hours um, this afternoon to to be discussing, really going uh, as much as possible in depth of what we plan to do, to see how we want to engage, how you want to be engaged in different uh, actions, events, um, elements that we will be producing, where we we see it very clearly that we want to engage as much as, as possible um, partners and colleagues that uh, that see their projects and their outcomes. Uh, relevant to what we plan to do together. So I really encourage you to be uh, proactive, uh, not to be shy, to just ask if you have any question, to raise your hand, to open your, your camera and microphone. I think my colleague Sonsolis has gone through that already with you. So it's really uh, the aim of today is really to be as much as possible interactive, to extract as much as possible information from you, to see how you want to be engaged in which ways and what fits you best, which working group, which activity under this working group is best for your uh, somehow, yes, objectives and needs and so on. So as you can see, I'll be giving a very brief welcome note uh, and I'll be explaining a bit um, what we, what we um, yes, I would, I, would, I would say, chronogram. Uh, for these two years, and then I will give the floor to my colleagues uh, now, Tuan, uh, Marco, Ifigenia, with whom we have a great, um, a great relation as another uh, interreg uh, Balkan Mediterranean project. Also, uh, Gloria from Plan Bleu, and I will uh, come back to you at the end of this session to give you a bit of, of the conclusions and main next steps. So that's the agenda from two to four Central Europe time. And uh, just to briefly go, uh, yeah, inform you about what what we did in the first stage of the project. So, um, since 2016, we uh, we started um, a partnership dedicated to projects. They started as 11 projects, and four new projects came in uh, as a community of 15 projects linked to biodiversity protection that are co-funded by the InterregNet program. Um, in these uh, three years, we have developed quite much of a, of a roadmap that, uh, to, my, to my criteria, we have really gone through the most important elements of it. We really reached quite some compromises. Uh, we have signed some memoranda of understanding with different stakeholders. Uh, we have put forward quite some mechanisms to support region decision-making processes. We have set some knowledge bases that were major gaps in the Mediterranean. Um, I, could, I could count on the MedBioLiter, that's a database uh, on the interaction uh, between biota and marine litter in the whole Mediterranean basin. That was one major outcome to capitalize on. We have a common uh, platform of knowledge and data that is online and that is uh, open source for anyone to be able to access, to extract data, uh, to know which partners are present around around uh, their institutions, on which topics we work. That was also developed and is still maintained and will be maintained until 2022 at least. Uh, we also have gone into, um, into a common declaration on the, the need of using ecosystem-based approaches as um, as a basis for any decision making in the Mediterranean, um, I don't want to take more time. Uh, on the web page, you can get all the information you need. You can um, you can write us and get more information based on your needs. What I think is useful to do is to maybe show you uh, in two minutes 
the, the, the main points of the, this common declaration that we presented in the EU Parliament in December 2018, and we signed one year later in October um, uh, 2019 here in Malaga in the final event of this first phase. I think it could, this video would highlight uh, mainly the priorities that we have set ourselves and that are the basis for this phase. They are mainly the point for our roadmap for the upcoming uh, two years. So maybe, Manu, if you could provide us with a video that would give an overview. Thank you. United for effective actions to protect the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean's diversity of plants and animals, biodiversity, is an amazing gift to us. They play a crucial role in our lives. Wetlands, rocky shores, sandy beaches, seagrass meadows host an amazing variety of life, which are all part of an interconnected ecosystem. This Mediterranean ecosystem is part of our daily life, and it provides essential goods and benefits like clean air, water, and healthy food. However, over-exploitation, pollution, unsustainable fisheries and climate change are affecting the balance. Human activities have become a major threat to our sea and to our daily lives. We need to act now. Many Mediterranean people, social organizations, companies and institutions are well aware of this need. Our community, over 200 partners in the region, has worked for three years to create a common base for our shared goal. We have practiced a constant dialogue, exchanging experiences and knowledge, linking science, management and policy actors. We have discovered that solutions to protect our environment need to be designed beyond borders, free from self-interest and short-term economic gain, and have then created the Mediterranean Declaration for an ecosystem-based approach. Our declaration is an important step to protecting our future. Its main points of action are to acknowledge the value of and threats to the Mediterranean, to engage in dialogue and cooperation with all economic sectors for a sustainable future. To exchange experiences and good practices to influence better policies and practices. To activate cooperation mechanisms for effective biodiversity conservation and ecosystem management. Sign up and share our declaration for the Mediterranean today. Because together we are stronger and more effective. All together for a better Mediterranean. Yes, thank you, Manu, for that. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, engagement is uh, a real priority uh, in this project. So, we think that the power of people is very important, the power of engaging different types of stakeholders is very important. The power of setting clear objectives is very important. Uh, so um, that's why we would like really today to focus on how we can really find a way to work together and under which uh, priority areas, I would say. If we move to the, yes, to this um, second slide, uh, it is a little bit complicated. I don't think that you need to see all its content. Uh, but it, at least uh, in my presentation, it would help me a bit drive you through what we plan to do uh, in this phase. So we are a bit around this um, uh, this red triangle uh, by mid 2020. Um, I mean, as you are all in a way uh, living, we have had to readapt quite of our our plans for this year. We are still adapting them actually uh, to the, the COVID reality that we are all living. So uh, we have set quite some uh, some work to be able to uh, to put a solid strategy for our project uh, in the past uh, months, and then to link it with main uh, priority actions and action plan. Uh, that we mainstream, as I mentioned, through uh, three working groups that are uh, mainly that have thematic priorities. Um, so, uh, so we have been developing all of this uh, for the participants. I guess you had received 
a background document for the first webinar, if you have been a participant in the first webinar, where we have set the main, uh, the main points around our strategy. And then on each webinar, as a basis, we are sharing with you a background document that we call a fact sheet that is more focused on what are the priorities under this uh, working group that we have. So uh, this is a bit of the work that we have been putting together as a, as a, as a partnership in these uh, last six months. Uh, we have also engaged with quite some, um, some uh, stakeholders from um, the outside of, of the community to see how we arrange for uh, real um, collaborations uh, for the upcoming two years. So this is a bit where, what we have been doing in this time. Um, after that, of course, we wanted to, uh, to be able to see you all in a two-day event and to explain and go in depth in real interactive workshops, but that, that was not possible. So we went into this series of webinars that we hope they are interactive enough and useful for you. Um, after that, uh, we plan to still stick as much as possible to a webinar setting this year. The situation is not very clear on, uh, on the future. So we, uh, we have finally had to adapt quite some, some meetings that we had uh, thought about um, around, um, around uh, Montenegro. We work very closely. We have a partner that is the, uh, the Ministry of Sustainable Development and Tourism in Montenegro, where we have planned for tailor-made training caps capsules, uh, mainly to reinforce the um, upcoming, hopefully, declarations of marine protected areas in Montenegro. We have also planned some transfer webinars. They were expected to be a, a real um, training for planners and for conservationists in um, uh, this year in Venice, uh, very closely well co-organized co with the Blue Med Initiative. But finally, we had to start with a webinar that will be hopefully followed up by a a real meeting um, or real training uh, school uh, next year, um, as well as a transboundary governance um, um, workshop um, around the Adriatic Ionian uh, that also we had to shift and we will now be a webinar. These are things that are coming after the summer break. Uh, we have also been uh, engaging uh, and we want to engage you today. I think part of the discussion goes around quite some activities that, uh, that we want to do around wetland ecosystems in the Mediterranean. Uh, we have very closely been working for many years now with, uh, with the European Commission, with DG Environment, with DG Clima, uh, on these topics for Europe. We have engaged very closely with um, wet main areas. And here we, we are very happy to have a colleague to present shortly this uh, Mediterranean Balkan, uh, so, or Interreg Balkan Mediterranean um, uh, pro funded project uh, that will be closely also contributing to, uh, to the discussions we have on, uh, on wetlands. And of course, we have within our advisory board, associated partners, uh, main uh, institutions in the Mediterranean, such as Tour du Vala, such as Medwet, with whom we will be engaging. So uh, we will start with a meeting uh, or a workshop uh, around the Green Week uh, that will finally take place between October 20 and 22 in Brussels. Uh, we are setting the basis for, for this uh, workshop. Uh, we are still pending a bit on the situation, but uh, we hope to be able to make it a, a physical meeting. If not, we would shift to also a webinar setting. And I just came out of the steering committee of uh, the upcoming MPA forum um, that was uh, taking place originally uh, by the end of November and the beginning of December this year. But just this morning, uh, the discussion went into uh, having to readjust as well. So I will not say more. I think the official, um, the official, uh, I would say um, adaptation plan will be coming soon, but uh, finally what is for sure is that the meeting will not take place physically in Monaco this year, uh, and there are adaptations to some other settings that uh, hopefully very soon uh, you will get a save the date um, and, and see if you are interested in, in, um, in being part of. So we are engaged heavily in the MPA Forum uh, 2020 preparation. Uh, I have it on the slide as uh, happening in November because until this morning it was the case. Um, so we are very closely uh, preparing with uh, our colleagues from SPARAC, from MedSpan, from WWF Mediterranean and the Med Fund. 
um, initiative. So, um, so we plan there to have some sessions uh, focusing on transboundary issues as well as trainings as side events. That was the original plan. We are seeing now the ways to adapt all of this to still engage this year and most probably physically next next year uh, with that uh, with that forum. Uh, then up to now, the IUCN World Congress um, that is still called 2020 will take place in Marseille in January uh, 2021. And there we have several events planned. I don't, I will not go into details. I think the discussion later on will uh, will inform more about uh, the, the sessions that we plan to have. Um, it will be from our side also followed up the same year, but in December 2021, by a side event uh, in the upcoming Barcelona Convention COP. Uh, there we have several, um, I would say, main areas that we want to to uh, to engage uh, the participants with in this um, side event, especially that it will be a moment where many of the project outcomes of the activities that you will be engaged with. Uh, will already have interesting results. So we think it could be much more of a focused session that we can um, that we can prepare together and engage with. And also, of course, it's very closely um, uh, prepared with UNEP MAP, but also Union for the Mediterranean in the last discussion we're uh, also interested in contributing to. So what you see in uh, in yellow is normally these collaborations um, we have been uh, we have been working on as well. Um, and uh, we will be ending up in a final event that will take place at the EU Parliament. And this is uh, very closely co-organized with the Sierica Interparliamentarian Group. Uh, that will be mainly uh, the, the opportunity for us to showcase all of our results uh, very nearly to, to policymakers from different institutions, uh, representing different, I would say, uh, interest sectors and so on. Um, and uh, so that will be around uh, the, the end of the project. We plan to do that between April and, and May uh, 2022. Uh, so why we do so? Because we want to push forward all of the activities, the most important outcomes that the whole community uh, is developing in different uh, thematic areas um, into relevant, I would say, uh, fora. Uh, to raise awareness, to train, to showcase. So all of these, I think, are what we are going to be talking about uh, later on in the session. So I think the objectives are clear. We want to try to influence several key um, processes. I can maybe move to the upcoming slide. So here, I think in, in, your, uh, in the fact sheet that you have received as a background document for this meeting, uh, you have a table where you can see the, uh, the main targets that we have set uh, for ourselves for the whole project. Uh, and here you can see the main targets that have been set for this working group. So we have some global targets uh, or targets at global scales that we would like to reach. We want to engage, uh, still engaging because we have uh, been engaging already with the Ramsar Convention um, on wetlands as a very relevant um, um, key targets for us under this working group, as well as other uh, settings linked to climate change, to adaptation mechanisms, and so on. Um, at the European level, I think we, we would like to target very well um, the EU Green Deal. Mainly, I think the, the, the priority on the ecosystem restoration is very important, and I think we need to be targeting this as much as possible. Uh, more will be will be said around that also uh, later on. At the Mediterranean scale, of course, we have a wide range of uh, institutions um, and instruments that are very interesting interesting to us in this working group. The ICZM protocol being a main element, no, to uh, to mainly uh, plan better uh, for the activities using ecosystem based approaches and so on. Um, uh, to add to that, for in this um, in this phase, we have added, as you see in the box uh, down right, some sub-regional territorial targets. These targets they were not present in the first phase. They are targets where we want to really go to the ground and try to influence as much as, as possible different territories through area-based management. So uh, we have been engaging a lot with the Spanish Ministry. Uh, after the declaration of, um, of the Mediterranean Citations Corridor, 
We will be helping them through the Intemaris uh, project that they have at the national level, um, through some engagement processes and maybe some knowledge about some gaps uh, in terms of knowledge they have already in um, in the project. So that's that's really going into something concrete. Uh, in Montenegro, as I mentioned, we want to engage and try to facilitate build capacities for um, upcoming uh, MPAs and MPA managers. Um, we will be supporting through these workshops around the Adriatic Ionian uh, ecoregions uh, ways to widen the network of uh, marine protected areas in that region by lo locally locating and uh, making sure that there is a clear discussion, transboundary discussion about sensitive areas. I heard that, Terna, I'm closing. <laughs> and um, and together with um, with some of your projects, we will go into strengthening the network of MPAs in certain areas, such as Croatia, Spain, France, and Belarus. And this has been coming from uh, one of the projects in this space, the MPA networks, that will be focusing on that. And we will be supporting from our side also this uh, clear objective to us. Um, I think that was, in terms of content, what I wanted to share with you. Sorry, it's a bit uh, quick, but I think all this material is, in a way, also reflected in the background document that you you have received, and they will be more clearly uh, discussed later on. Um, I think, as upcoming from my side, we will go to two main questions that we would like to uh, to have your opinion on. I think some sort is referred to how you can uh, fill somehow or write in this pod that you could see below the slide. So uh, two questions to you. The first one is, among these policies and network targets that were identified for this working group, could you please select uh, the ones that you see most relevant to your work, your activities? That would be helpful for us to know. And the second question is whether you have any other key legal instruments or stakeholder as targets uh, that you don't see in this table and that you would like to share with us and add so we can also adapt um, our documents and add it. Yeah, I'll give one more minute. I see that people are still typing. So, uh, so one more minute to get as many answers as we can. And in case you think you need more time, feel free to add them to the chat uh, that you have um, whenever you want uh, during the, the session or by email later on. So maybe for not losing too much more time, we have lots of interesting material. I will, maybe we can broadcast the results, Manu, so people can at least see what uh, has been mentioned already and if they still want to add something, they could add it on the chat. Okay, so among the, the policies that you think most relevant is the MAP ecosystem approach implementation, the sub-regional territorial targets, I do agree totally, the MSFD, the EU Marine, Spatial, uh, Marine Strategy Framework Directive, the Ramsar Convention, Marine Strategy Framework Directive, Barcelona Convention, sorry, I'm moving my camera, all geographic scales, well, there is Strategy 2030, the EU Nature Directives, the SAPIO, MSFD, okay. And some people miss a few things, such as the UNESCO IOC, the CS. okay. Good, good to know. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, all the answers are very useful for us to see what we have missed and try to, um, to, uh, to also add to it if it's really a priority for your activities as well. Very well. So I think with this, um, I would give the floor to my colleague, Serna, who will drive you through the upcoming session. Serna, you ready? Yes, I'm here. Yes, OK. Catch Hello. You later. Good afternoon to, to, to all of you. Dania uh, gave you a flavor of, let's say, our global community, global meaning Mediterranean on the general level. And what uh, we are planning to do in next uh, two or three years, uh, of course, um, uh, with the adjustment uh, to the current situation and uh, that COVID have uh, um, uh, that it results from the COVID pandemic. And now, uh, with uh, this uh, section, I will try to downscale it and uh, give you uh, some information about the working group three, our objectives, then how we came uh, to where we are and uh, establishing the group. So,
So uh, mano, I don't see the uh -huh, sorry arrows. Am I clicking right, mano? So uh, uh, the working group uh, three uh, is called integrated ecosystem monitoring and, and management. And uh, what we would uh, what we would like to to pursue and and do is uh, to work on the integrated vision of Mediterranean ecosystem from the point of um, uh, lengthy interaction and some specific uh, ecosystem like uh, wetland. So these are our main, let's say, topics or, or, or uh, I will say, uh, thematic ta uh, targets of this uh, working group. And uh, at the slide, you will see four distinguished objectives and uh, strengthening monitoring and management tools in, in protected areas in Mediterranean. And well, what we would like to do is to pursue further policies and instruments which uh, were already uh, implemented through our uh, community from Panacea project and now uh, widen with a new project and also uh, to uh, embrace and capitalize on the new tools uh, that will be developed and on the work of the new modular projects that are part of our community, as Dania said, 11 plus new four, so comprising 15 uh, modular projects in the overall uh, Mediterranean biodiversity protection community network. Um, uh, collecting data generated by the project, as I said, uh, it will um, uh, feed the, our open source, the Mediterranean Biodiversity Protection Community Knowledge Platform, which uh, can be used or should be used uh, for analyzing, for review, for further dissemination, and also uh, to capitalize on the data that has been um, generated or first feed in and then generated by this open source. Um, in addition, uh, we would like to also work on providing uh, spatial data for maritime spatial planning. planning. Uh, what we would uh, focus on is the further uh, transferring and capitalize uh, with different actions to uh, focus on lengthy interaction and wetlands in order to uh, further identify and disseminate and support development of integrated ecosystem monitoring and management. Uh, we would like to provide special data for maritime special planning with uh, combining conflicting uh, priorities uh, as these two, like land sea interaction or the uh, activities coming from human activities and with, uh, in relation to marine environment and biodiversity. And we would like to do that based on uh, specific project pilot site results and their strat strategies uh, and to transfer these results. Uh, and what we would like to then, uh, to let's say, achieve or to foster is this integrative approach that should be adopted for managing uh, marine protected areas in Mediterranean. So this uh, is, let's say, a main focus or framework of the uh, work of the working group three within our um, Mediterranean Biodiversity Protection Community Network. Um, in this slide, we have uh, selected and we put some um, main achievements uh, which we would build on in the first thing, uh, for, uh, in first in initial uh, activity and then uh, capitalize on the new activities and new results of the uh, project that are continuing or our new ones that are part of our community. And I would like to, to maybe start with a, let, I would say a star, our star, which is my Mediterranean Biodiversity Protection Tools Catalog, um, is really an instrument that um, not only summarize, but uh, uh, gather on one place all uh, or main management and monitoring tools for protected, uh, for protected areas in Mediterranean that have been generated by the work of uh, modular projects. Uh, in addition, uh, the previous uh, project had, had also uh, developed uh, two uh, fact sheets, uh, one for the working group three concretely, which uh, the title Integrated Ecosystem Monitoring and Management Fact Sheet, and also the other one which 
um, uh, was dealing with specifically with uh, biodiversity protection in the land uh, land sea interaction uh, uh, team called sensitive biodiversity protection in the land sea continuum support to decision making through multiple user approaches the uh, work of the uh, previous uh, uh, project also uh, resulted in a technical paper for this uh, working group that also existed in previous uh, project uh, panacea were, and its title was innovative methods and protocols results and recommendations addressing the monitoring of the land sea interaction and last but i will not say the least but are also um, very um, i will say um, valuable uh, tool is this is what Danny also mentioned and I um, open source Mediterranean biodiversity protection knowledge platform uh, which uh, has a lot of potential for further even research and uh, ma as a management and decision making uh, like let's say um, a background or a framework for further uh, uh, developing activities for further actions in Mediterranean. Um, we had some networking and showcasing that we are uh, we have uh, we will be I will not say build on but further uh, work uh, and try uh, to target uh, achievement of our objectives uh, in previous periods. So uh, the, this working group have been um, uh, involved in nine European Ramsar meeting. Uh, that took place in uh, between uh, 19 and 23rd of March 2018. Uh, we also uh, were involved in bridging the science, practice, and policy gaps for biodiversity protection Mediterranean meeting that happened in Barcelona on 24th and 25th of October in 2017. Um, also, one of the events that we wanted to, to, to let's say, to, uh, to show you that how we worked previously was enhancing EU policies with the ecosystem-based approach that uh, uh, was organized in Brussels in December 2018. And, of course, Panacea final event, which uh, uh, the team with ecosystem-based adaptation, a pulse for transformative changes in the Mediterranean that happened in Malaga. On, for, from 14 to 16 of October. Um, here, this slide, uh, I will not go into depth, but just briefly uh, tell you, uh, or let's say, the narratively explain the uh, visual uh, photo that you are seeing that uh, our community is comprised of uh, seven uh, partners. Uh, the, it's led by ETC UMA. Um, uh, this working group is uh, coordinated by Plan Blue. And all uh, all our community uh, is based on the work uh, of the 11 plus 415 modular projects, from which activities and actions and results so we have um, de um, de definite, definited or defined three working groups. Uh, and today, the webinar is de dedicated to working group three, which is integrated ecosystem monitoring and uh, titled ecosystem monitoring and management. Uh, and our work uh, is uh, being uh, transferred to the, this open source, our knowledge base platform. The, uh, our, let's say, vision, what we want to, to, to achieve or to, let's say, to work, uh, to, uh, uh, what we would work on is to address key challenges for Mediterranean in relation to integrated ecosystem monitoring and to contribute to better understanding of land sea interaction and wetland ecosystem. We will do this in the partnership with uh, uh, modular project, and you see here we uh, the division between, let's I will say, old or from the previous project, which are Amare, EcoSustain, Faros for MPAs, Posby Med, and Wetnet, and new one that, that joined the community. Some of them have been, um, let's say, I will say, extension or continuation of the work of previous project. So uh, we welcome MPA Engage, MPA Networks, Posby Med 2, and TuneUp. But also, we will collaborate with um, uh, Interregmed Balkan program, wetman areas, with our associate, part associate partner partners. And uh, we have some suggestions from previous webinars from you uh, regarding collaboration, like Madison's project, uh, the work on Paparak on governance and wetlands, or uh, Medved, communi Medved communication, etc. So we will build upon it, and we will surely 
collaborate. And I would like to use this opportunity now to call our new modular project uh, to present themselves in just two, a few sentences, one or two sent sentences. So uh, if I don't see volunteers, uh, let's start with uh, MPA Engage. And I would call a representative of MPA Engage to say a few words about the project and present uh, him or herself. MPA Engage. Uh, I think Isabel is trying, or I see the microphone. Isabel, is it you that you want to speak? Because we don't hear you. OK, uh, if, we ha if she has some technical problem, can, we, uh, can I call NPA Networks? And we will come back to NPA Gage. Don't be shy. As Sonsoles, I think there is a, uh, Sonsoles expression. Don't be shy, please. Uh, take the, let's say take the floor, say a few sentences about uh, your project and uh, where, uh, what we are going to work on. Sorry, I'm Valentina Capanera from Portofino MPA. We are uh, MPA. We are involved in uh, MPA network project. Uh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, Valentina. Uh, I, sorry, but we are also involved in MPA uh, MPA Engage uh, project. But I was thinking that uh, Kim Garabu or uh, any uh, <laughs> any other uh, person. Uh, uh, was uh, in the webinar. Sorry, uh, I didn't uh, um, I didn't have the so, uh, question. Yeah, sorry. can you just present can your you your project uh, in like uh, just briefly in two sentences, two three sentences uh, as a new uh, uh, project in our community? Ah, okay. Um, Yes, in a few people, I can say that uh, MPA Network Project is focused on the um, on the strengthening um, of of uh, of MPA um, effectiveness by the implementation the yes by the implementation of uh, the network of MPAs at. Uh, Subregional, national, and uh, transnational uh, level, and um, we want to to work uh, on uh, um, on uh, some topics that uh, we consider important for uh, Mediterranean MPAs, uh, such as uh, uh, small scale fishery, uh, financing, uh, mobile species, uh, and uh, effective. Okay, rate. thank. Thank you, Valentina. Uh, do we have someone from PostBMed too? I see here Eleni and Emmy. Hello. Can, yeah, we can, can hear you. Yes, my microphone is working. OK, this is Emmy from IUCN Med. And we're working on PostBMed 2. We're involved in PostBMed 2, which is a continuation of the first phase of PostBMed. And it is a project focusing on the Posidonia Banquets in, in the Mediterranean, where in particular in eight pilot sites that we have. And the objectives of this of Postobed 2 include implementing local framework for decision making for Posidonia Banquets with different approaches and tools that are tested, also to increase stakeholder awareness and build more nature oriented management strategies and to, in general, provide better integration planning tools to be included in the management of the Great. Thank events. you, Emmy. Thank you. Yeah, very shortly. Shortly. Uh, <laughs> I'm now calling TuneUp. Is there someone from TuneUp presented here? Christos, uh, we hello. hear you. Can you hear me? You, you Christos, yes? Sorry. No, I'm Flavio Monti. Sorry. I don't know if someone other wants to speak, because I see on the list that there are many partners from TuneUp Project. Otherwise, I can just Please do so. Tools. Ah, OK, so um, yeah, TUNAP brings together 12 partners from seven countries. And is a multimodal project uh, trying to develop a collaborative approach for Mediterranean MPAs based on the previous experience of the uh, WetNet project, which is ended last year, trying to develop a governance tool based on the, on the ribbon wetland contracts applied to MPAs in the Mediterranean basin. So we just started last, uh, last year in 2019, and then we will continue until 
2022. The project Thank will you, Flavio. I read here that Christos had some problem with his mic. I know that uh, you, you uh, solved the issue. Flavio, thank you for, for the introduction. I see that um, Christos uh, has some technical problems. I will just call again very shortly. Is there anyone from MPA Gage that, uh, that can present in shortly the project? If not, I will then continue because we are short of time and I will have to bell myself. So, uh, short of time, Manu, can you, uh, can I change? Okay, thank you. So, uh, with this, uh, what the, the community uh, ha is set, a part of the working group that each of the project has its companion. And on the slide, you see the companion that is uh, following uh, each of your project. And I think uh, most of us know each other very well. And I won't go into details and in the names uh, for each of your projects. But uh, each of the companion will be in con frequent con contact with uh, all of the projects following on the development and results, and also informing of the activities of uh, our MBPC project. Uh, so uh, some of the information that uh, these frequent calls will take place every six weeks and that we will exchange information on the development of our projects, both of modular and our horizontal. And now I would like to, to uh, uh, go to the question uh, part uh, of the section. And you will see here that you have three questions that we would like to get some information from you. Um, I, we would like to uh, confirm. Um, you commit your commitment of your project to the working group. So if you can please uh, write uh, the name of the project uh, so we can know that you're committed to the work of this group. Add the name of the partner, which will be our main contact for this exchange of information. And in the end, if you have any suggestion uh, how we can improve uh, our work, uh, that we can work together more efficiently in, in the future, please do so. So I see some uh, uh, have already been uh, putting the names of the project and some answers. If you don't know the uh, name or the partner that would be in contact, please uh, send us a message or an email uh, once uh, that decision has been made. I will give you some maybe uh, some 15 uh, seconds more. Uh, I will just ask uh, a question with the answer uh, regarding the question three secure regularly monthly exchange coordination meeting with working group three. Does it mean that all uh, modular projects within the working group three should have a joint meeting uh, with working uh, modular project and working group three members from the horizontal project? So I think we are broadcasting. Uh, did we broadcast it, Manu, or should I broadcast the results? Yeah, so they're yeah, broadcasted correctly. So we have some uh, answers, and uh, with this, uh, if we uh, or if you want to uh, give uh, provide some more suggestion, uh, please do through uh, do uh, via chat or send us an email or to your companion that uh, you have uh, or you have seen on the slide or to the MBPC team, and uh, we will take it into account. And now um, I would like to give. Uh, I think we have to close this section. Uh, in order to, to try to be as much as efficient as we can with the remaining time. And I would like to uh, give the floor to uh, Anchan from Plan Blue. Thank you, Ferna. So, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, thank you, Dania, for your in introducing speech. Thank you, Serna, for the presentation of the section one. So, um, I am uh, Antoine Lafitte, a program officer at, at Plan Bleu. Uh, as you may know, Plan Bleu is one of the regional activity center of the UNEP MAP Barcelona Convention System, acting at, at, as a Mediterranean Observatory for Sustainable Development. Our main mandate is given by the contracting parties to the Bar Barcelona Convention, and under this uh, project, this horizontal project, Plan Bleu is in charge of capitalizing methods, practices, and tools produced by the modular project but also uh, coming from the previous phase of Panacea and mainstream them into the Barcelona Convention system and in liaising with thousand med countries. So this section two um, will focus on the actions proposed 
and we will start to present the main policy targets and action plan. The policy targets uh, have been already presented in detail by my colleague Dania, uh, the lead partner, but within the activity of, of the second phase of the Mediterranean Biodiversity Protection Community Project, the Working Group 3 will pursue transferring and capitalization action focusing on both length interactions and coastal wetlands to further identify, disseminate and support development of integrated ecosystem monitoring and manage management setting in the Mediterranean, European and national levels. It's a quick summary um, about what has been said before by my colleague Dania. So this slide presents the main policy and targets group we expect to reach. And you have on the left side the main policies and on the right side the main stakeholder groups. So you will easily recognize some of them already presented before. So regarding the main outputs about this working group three, uh, just the small um, drawing is showing um, the title of this working group the link with the main uh, policies, like the Marine Spatial Planning, the Framework Directive, and also the Barcelona Convention, and especially all the work done under the ICZM and um, MSP work at the Mediterranean level. Plan Bleu, ETSUMA, and the Mon Montenegrin Ministry of Sust Sustainable Development of and Tourism of Montenegro coordinate the work done under this working group three. So regarding the lengthy interaction topic, the three main outputs will be a report from the IUCN World Congress on Nature-Based Solution that should be held in next January. Uh, also a technical fact sheet on best available techniques and best environmental practices on marine renewable energies, capitalizing on or already existing um, outcomes from the Faros for MPA projects, and also to produce regional guidelines on cruise and recreational, recreational boating. Regarding wetland ecosystem, the two main deliverables outputs are a fact sheet and a database about Mediterranean-wide knowledge base on the extent and condition of wetland ecosystem in the Mediterranean. And my colleague Marco Trombetti will give you more explanation about this after my speech. And also an advocacy paper under Plan Bleu Lead is expecting to be produced, highlighting the importance of conservation and restoration of wetland ecosystems. And we, I can add here that uh, we are preparing a concept note also to attend the European Green Week in, in next October with this main focus on the importance of conservation on restoration of wetland ecosystem and also in the context of this uh, COVID pandemic. The next slide will now um, refer directly to the concept note uh, that you should have received and especially page, pages five and six, if you want to open the concept note. Um, and this slide is presenting the general overview of the working group, three types of proposed actions. I will quickly present them, but again, I invite you to open in front of you this concept note. So the three main uh, proposed actions are, the first one is very important, from science to management to policy. The second one is also important. It's regarding special data on new knowledge produced. And the last one is uh, regarding the networking and showcasing of integrated best practices. Regarding from science to management and to policies, the fact sheets and the technical papers featuring integrated ecosystem monitoring and management will contribute to this first action. A series of fact sheets and technical papers will be produced during the lifetime of the project. And considering the, its efforts to promote an integrated governance for sustainable management of protected areas, the Working Group 3 focuses on strengthening monitoring and management tools to support managers of these areas. Regarding special data on new knowledge, the data generated by the modular projects is essential to enrich the 
Mediterranean Biodiversity Protection Community Knowledge Platform, which has been presented earlier at the beginning of the, of the webinar, as well as existing permanent database of protected areas at Mediterranean level. In addition, based on the project's pilot sites and their strategies for transferring the results, working three efforts will showcase lengthy interaction management tools such as, as I said, marine spatial planning and integrated coastal zone management. And at Mediterranean level, you may know that it exists the unique uh, protocol of ICZM for a regional sea uh, under the, followed by PAPRAC um, in Croatia. Regarding uh, it's the networking and showcasing, uh, we would like to emphasize that an integrative approach should be adopted when managing MPAs. The implementation of an integrated land sea conservation planning and management allows to meet conservation targets more efficiently to account also for human uses occurring on land affecting marine habitats. The next slide so is presenting uh, in detail uh, the the legal frameworks supported by our action and how we can reach key Mediterranean stakeholders. How? Through actions and tools produced by relevant modular projects. Modular project already ended and the new ones. Uh, Amare project with one, Postbemen one and two, TuneUp, MP Engage and also Faros for MPAs which has produced some recommendation, for example on leisure boating and marine renew renewable energy. We will organize a series of virtual working group, we will produce some papers, some fact sheets I have already said, uh, we are also based our work on, on the catalog of tools produced during Panacea phase and also through the inter-community toolbox. This toolbox is one of the produced uh, expected under the working work package on capitalization. Plan Bleu is leading and we are uh, already working with um, the Blue Gross community. Uh, to produce this, uh, this tool, toolbox. This is uh, the focus for land sea interactions uh, part. Regarding wetlands, uh, we have the same approach. Um, we are going through relevant modular projects. Uh, here, wetnet, ecosystem, and tune-up, which is, the, let's say, the new phase of wetnet. Um, we are going to support some legal frameworks and to reach key Mediterranean stakeholders. These frameworks are AMSA, Panoramed uh, program, also the Interagmed program, which is part of the Mediterranean stakeholders, and also PAPRAC. How we will do this? Through action and tools again, uh, through the advocacy papers we plan to produce, through the fact sheets, database we plan to enrich, and also through um, the catalog of tools and again the intercommunity toolbox. Regarding special data on, on knowledge, um, we are going to, um, to support some legal frameworks also to its key militant stakeholders through many relevant modular projects and through actions and tools, which are also the um, knowledge platform, other cartographic tools, as I said the toolbox and the series of fact sheets we plan to produce. Regarding the networking and showcasing, um, we are proposing also a series of action and tools, um, some possible event, side events uh, during the Mediterranean Biodiversity Protection Community Capitalization event. The first of them will be the European Green Week, as I said, in October 2020, and we are preparing concept not for that. We are also uh, proposing some possible side events. We have identified um, within the frame of modular project events. Uh, so it's just a proposal, uh, some ideas here, and we would like to hear from you what are your, 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 your thoughts about this. Uh, we have identified uh, some uh, events under TUNAP projects also under post 2 project. So then we will have the opportunity to discuss more about this aspect. So I would like to, to thank you for your uh, attention. And now I leave the floor to, to my colleague Marco uh, Trombetti from ATSEUMA, who will tell us more about the large scale mapping of wetlands. And then to my colleague Iphigenia from the National Observatory of Athens, who will tell us more about monitoring of surface water dynamics 
in wetland ecosystems. And then we will have a series of questions and answers. Thank you for your attention. Uh, now, Marco, you can, you can speak. I give the floor to Marco. Thank you again. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Antoine, thanks a lot for the introduction. Um, I'm Marco Trombetti from the European Topic Center at the University of Malaga, colleague of Dania, Sonsoles, and Emanuele. Um, how can I scroll through the presentation? Sorry. Oh, thanks. So the topic of uh, uh, wetlands here yeah, has been already introduced briefly by Antoine. I want to give you here some uh, uh, more in insights, more details about the work we intend uh, to develop within this uh, working group. Um, so first of all, I think it's important to give you an idea about uh, the, um, the challenges of this work and uh, of its relevance. Uh, the wetland ecosystem is um, a very interesting and complex uh, um, ecosystem made up of several, uh, several different habitats, uh, sometimes very different from each other. And you can see in the picture like uh, they are very spread all over, very well spread um, over the, um, the landscape. Uh, and this cause, this has been historical cause the problem of their uh, um, misrepresentation. Um, and uh, um, that comes from the fact that the definition of uh, the wetland ecosystem um, is, uh, uh, is not harmonized. Um, for example, we see at the European level that uh, several uh, um, that wetlands are defined in different ways um, in, in, in the different uh, uh, legisl uh, legislative tools or, uh, or uh, initiatives which uh, uh, deal, deal with wetlands. Um, again, in the, in the figure, we can see that uh, uh, different wetland habitats are covered uh, from different, uh, different tools, sometimes from one, sometimes the tools overlap, sometimes there is no uh, uh, representation at all. Uh, this is uh, uh, indeed a problem since that, uh, uh, because the, the fact that uh, uh, habitats are not well uh, represented and defined um, causes is, is a cause for uh, for um, for a lack of monitoring um, of, of wetlands. Uh, and since they are not monitored, there is no reporting. And uh, eventually, and finally, uh, this, this is a gap in uh, uh, for policy making. We need we need then we then need to start uh, uh, looking at things differently. Uh, in order to be able to report things uh, differently. Ultimately, it's uh, the need that uh, it's been, uh, it, it, it's a need for a different management approach, which has to be ecosystem based. At the Mediterranean level, um, all these uh, uh, issues apply and uh, the knowledge gap absolutely exists. Um, there is a need for common initiatives. Uh, there is a um, they need to be able to report uh, to uh, international uh, um, strategies such as Ramsar on uh, wetland uh, extent and condition in an overnight way. Uh, this, is very, this at the moment is a, is a challenge because data sets are, uh, um, are, uh, are built with different accuracies and different uh, uh, mapping methodologies. Uh, many times we don't even know uh, uh, what can countries have and if they have any data. This said, maybe it's easier to understand uh, um, our objectives. So why we want to develop this uh, 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 these, uh, wide knowledge base, Mediterranean wide knowledge base, uh, in, and uh, um, which starts, uh, of course, with the mapping of uh, the wetland ecosystem based on its hydroecological extent. Uh, this will be then uh, the knowledge uh, base for uh, the identification of uh, areas to prioritize for restoration. And uh, eventually, based on this, we'll also be able, we would also be able to, um, to assess uh, um, the condition of wetland and um, assess the potential, their potential to provide ecosystem services. Um, luckily, we don't start from scratch. As Daniel already introduced before, uh, we've been involved for uh, um, already eight years. Um, in, uh, such a, um, in such an issue at the European level within the MICE uh, project. 
which is an initiative of the European Commission, in particular of uh, the G environment, um, <clears throat> which aim to provide uh, strategic input for the biodiversity strategy uh, 2020. Beside uh, um, the scientific aspect, this has become a um, policy making uh, process. Um, since uh, the product we, um, we have now produced has become a strategic input also for the next uh, biodiversity strategy uh, 2030. Uh, this, is, uh, this product is an extend, is a, is a, a map of, of uh, wetland at European level uh, following an hydrological uh, definition of, uh, of wetland, um, which is very important. For example, uh, the, um, uh, for miles, uh, wetlands were defined in a way um, which covered only 30% of the total uh, extent of, uh, of wetland. Uh, with our new product, uh, we are able to, um, to map the whole extent of wetlands uh, in Europe and uh, uh, also map um, <clears throat> wetland habitat types which are very um, limited in extent but uh, extremely important under the biodiversity point of view. Uh, beside the European uh, dimension, uh, we also work at the regional level and uh, this wants to be um, a participatory process, which we think is very important in, this, uh, um, in our approach within this working package. Uh, participatory process, because we need to engage uh, other institutions, we need to engage uh, other projects, we need to engage uh, you and any people or institution who is interested in this, uh, in this project, uh, in building this knowledge base. Um, on this basis, uh, we we have started building a, a synergy with um, a project uh, of the Interreg Balkan Med <coughs> Mediterranean uh, program, the Wetland Areas Project, um, which will be presented later by our colleague Eugenia, uh, which focused on uh, on mapping of wetlands in the Balkan uh, in the Balkan area. Uh, so to to sum up, the targets uh, well they've already been mentioned by. Uh, by Antoine, and we mentioned them already before, uh, they are quite clear. Uh, the methodology we want to intend to apply to reach this target, which are, which are ambitious, absolutely, um, are also quite uh, defined. For sure, the basis will be the, the work we've, done, we've been doing for miles, so the mapping of uh, wetlands at um, the European level, so applicable for the northern Mediterranean part of the study area. Uh, this work will be integrated with regional inventories, as we will be starting doing already. Um, and then, of course, we need to integrate uh, uh, ancillary uh, product, um, possibly also based on satellite remote sensing. All this framework uh, of work will need to be, of course, uh, further discussed and validated with uh, our advisory board members, uh, so to develop, but also with the uh, MedWet Policy Task Force. Uh, deliverables uh, already mentioned. Uh, but uh, I think it's important. Uh, um, well, we will have some occasion to showcase our uh, our product, our, our results already in October, the EU Green Week, uh, in November, the MPA Forum, and uh, in January, the Async Congress. Uh, probably will be able to uh, present our first uh, result since the first version of the inventory is planned for, uh, for March, together with uh, the draft of the advocacy paper on. Uh, uh, ecosystem services. Uh, by October of the same year, we plan uh, to have uh, uh, finalized uh, this assessment. Uh, then again, I want to remark again what is very important to us, uh, that uh, this approach we intend it and we'd like to be uh, very extremely uh, participative. So um, <clears throat> we'd like to, um, we have a few questions. Uh, you can uh, reply, come back to us later in the discussion or in the chat or, uh, or by email. Or <clears throat> so we'd like to understand how important you see this, uh, um, this work, this approach for your specific project. Um, if interesting, so then are you willing to participate, to join us in the, even in the discussion, just to get your ideas uh, according to your availability, of course. And then something also very practical but extremely important. Uh, with, uh, we would ask to we would ask you to share uh, any participating institution uh, to share data if available, or also very important would be to know uh, any information on projects and data set which can be relevant um, to us. Um, 
Now I would give the floor to Ifigenia, uh, who can uh, explain more in details um, what they've been done at the Balkan uh, regional level um, in their uh, in the project in the many areas. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for uh, the invitation to participate in this working group. Uh, uh, it is uh, uh, really a pleasure to, to be in this group. I'm uh, probably an uh, outsider in your ecosystem as I come from um, uh, the National Observatory of Athens that is a research center more um, working uh, with uh, satellite uh, data at least for our group and um, we work uh, in close collaboration to somebody who is in your ecosystem very well, and this is uh, Eleni Fitoka from ECVI. Uh, so uh, today uh, I'm going to present uh, uh, not, uh, not the project as a whole, uh, wet main areas. Uh, I'm just going to, to give a very, very short introduction to the project, but more I'm going to present uh, a system that we have developed for monitoring of surface water dynamics uh, using satellite data. Um, and uh, I'm going to uh, to pick some uh, some some points uh, from your presentations, uh, which were actually very enlightening to me, and uh, and then we can have a discussion um, afterwards. So uh, uh, just a couple of words about the project. Uh, Wet main areas uh, is finishing now. Um, actually, it's in the, in the extension uh, phase. Uh, it is it is phasing out. Uh, it is a Balkan Mediterranean uh, Interreg project. Um, it has been implemented in five uh, countries in the Balkan Med, and uh, uh, the, the project uh, developed a common knowledge base, uh, basis, including mapping and creation of harmonized geospatial data sets and indicators um, for, a pilot, for a number of pilots, but also in some cases, like the one I'm going to present here, for the whole uh, program area. Uh, and this has, uh, has, has its, own, uh, its own value, uh, I think. So um, the aim of this particular system that I'm going to present today is um, it was first to map, but I'm not going to show this part, and then to monitor. Um, uh, the water and wetness dynamics using uh, the new European satellites called Sentinel-2 multi-temporal uh, data for the whole Balkan Med transnational territory. Uh, these are five countries, uh, Bulgaria, Greece, Albania, North Macedonia and Cyprus. The partners were from the first four countries, uh, but also the results of, uh, of this system were given also uh, for Cyprus. A uh, few words about uh, the new satellites. Uh, they are called uh, Sentinel. Sentinel is uh, the, big, uh, uh, the big family of, uh, of European satellites. They are operated by the European Space Agency and they are part of the European uh, Commission flagship program called uh, Copernicus. Um, it is, uh, we have used Sentinel-2 and because they are identical, they have uh, the names 2A and 2B. Uh, and uh, they are polar orbiting satellites. This means that they are uh, at low, relatively low uh, height uh, above the Earth, uh, orbiting around the Earth. And this gives the opportunity for uh, very high uh, spatial resolution images. Because we have two, uh, the result is that we have a dense acquisition. So uh, images are acquired every five days at the equator. This means that in theory, if you have cloud-free uh, conditions about, above the wetlands of your interest, you can have um, one image every five days. Uh, this uh, this uh, system, Sentinel, uh, Sentinel-2A and 2B, uh, acquire, they have a sensor on board and they acquire multi-spectral data, that is data in different uh, parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. The data comes in tiles and uh, we have used 82 of these tiles, you can see them uh, here in the three, three zones, the three geographical zones, 
I'm not going to go into detail, but uh, as you can see, we have tiles that are, uh, um, the whole tile is uh, inland, or tiles that are mixed um, sea and uh, land. The main indicator uh, that uh, has been used uh, is an indicator that reveals the water and wetness temporal frequency. It, started, it starts as an indicator per individual image, so imagine that these are different time, um, uh, time different times where this uh, particular area was uh, acquired by the satellite system. So you create a data stacking. So uh, X and Y axis are of course the data, and the the Z axis is the uh, is time, and we calculate um, the open water and the wetness of um, each particular uh, pixel, and this is based on uh, on 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 the wet wetness uh, water and wetness index, which is the modified uh, differential uh, wetness index. So um, the source of the uh, initial uh, publication is in this slide. So the, the idea now is not only to take um, uh, an image of what is happening now, but of course, because you know uh, so much better uh, than me, uh, wetlands are so dynamic that you need to actually study um, the time series of how the water and the wetness um, change with time. So what we have done is we have calculated the relative frequency per pixel, uh, either open water or wetness. And then we have applied some rules that when open water, when a pixel, one pixel is open water for more than 85% of the time that it is found in this stack, then this pixel is characterized as permanent water. And then with the same, uh, with this kind of rules, we have the other category, permanent water, seasonal flooded areas, so on and so forth. So this is the idea behind the index. And here I'm going to show you, um, we have put all this in a system uh, uh, on the web. Here you see uh, the clusters of the, of the, the, the wetlands, and um, you can uh, zoom in. And uh, when you zoom in, you are able to see um, uh, the, the polygons of the different wetlands. So in this example, uh, I am uh, showing you the, uh, the, the Lake uh, Kerkini in northern Greece. And uh, so I, I, I click on this, and uh, what, uh, what I get is uh, this stack of different images where the water index is calculated, and underneath I see the result that is um, that is the, the statistical index where we have actually permanent water, seasonally flooded areas, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, this is done for uh, more than eight thousand five hundred wetlands uh, wetland polygons in uh, the five countries. Um, the in the initial um, uh, image before, um, you could see the, the first uh, image that was uh, acquired with this system. That was for, for Kerkini, it was acquired uh, in the end of June 2017. Whereas uh, the most recent, at least, uh, to be honest, this was the most recent when I created the slide. Now uh, there will be more instances than this. It is the 13th of April. Um, 2020. So this is this is a system that has been running uh, for uh, three. One minute, <laughs> Evgenia, please. Yeah. Okay. And um, you can download the files and save them. This is a, a zoom of uh, uh, of the result, and you can see the level of detail uh, with which these wetlands are mapped. And I'm going to finish with this slide that shows you we have used two satellites, three years, five countries, seven spectral indices, 8,637 wetland sites. I'm not going to, <laughs> to say the number because I, have, uh, I don't have time, but we have so many thousand clear instances. We are talking about 6,300,000 um, objects in the database that results in 50 seven gigabytes of data in the database. 
this is really big data in monitoring water dynamics and uh, with this I finish and uh, here are the contact details and also a YouTube link where you can see um, uh, this, this service. So thank you very much and uh, we can also have some discussion after this. Thank you, Iphigenia. Uh, so now we can um, move to the questions of this section two. Uh, I'm afraid that I cannot read uh, very well because the slide is very, very little. Yeah, I can help you maybe with that, Antoine. Yes, the, I don't know why I have... Uh, no problem, I can see yes. them. No, no. Okay, yep. so yes, this... Uh, thank you, Dania, for your proposal. Um, we will have actually two slides. We try to go... Um, uh, quickly because we are late. So here we want to know, uh, I, I, am, I know that, uh, I see that you are uh, voting now, which type of uh, proposed action on tools are you the most interested in? So thank you. So far we have this uh, tool catalog <coughs> taking the lead. Um, so we can leave uh, some, uh, some minutes. Uh, we have the report um, expected after the IUCN World Congress expected, uh, then the technical fact sheet um, expected on marine uh, renewable energies, uh, the guidelines on cruise and recreational boating, um, the catalog of tools, uh, the advocacy paper we also plan to, to deliver, uh, highlighting the importance of conservation on restoration of wetlands, um, the specific report on the valuing seminatorial media and ecosystems, both the fact sheet and the database, um, the platform, the toolbox, and uh, at the end, the ecosystem-based management declaration. Don Emanuele, if we can leave some, uh, some time, allowing all the participants to to vote. Yes, um, hello everybody, I'm Gloria, and uh, maybe Antoine, we can explain a little bit further the intercommunity toolbox. Yes. Uh, this is an idea that we, we would like to develop uh, with other horizontal projects mm -hmm. from the Interact Med program in order to put together all the tools that uh, have been developed uh, in the previous phases. And uh, yes, uh, the idea is that it will be a, a platform, an interactive platform, uh, not only a repository where uh, we can uh, find all the tools and outputs of the different projects, modular projects for the different uh, uh, horizontal projects. Yes. And uh, yes, I would like to thank you very much, Ifigenia, for your a wonderful presentation and the amazing data that you share with us and uh, maybe we can we can propose an exchange at the end of this webinar uh, because we are a little bit late so yes certainly yes thank you very much okay thank you Thank you, Gloria, for this additional element regarding the toolbox. And uh, to be frank, we are still um, uh, studying the possibility um, where hosting the platform, uh, the toolbox, I mean. So we are working on this uh, specific technical aspect, and we can have separate discussion with the one who answered that uh, they are interested in, in following this, uh, this specific uh, tool. Uh, thank you for all of you for your answers. Uh, maybe we can move to the next slide. Um, regarding the first question uh, is uh, regarding what I presented before. You, 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 you understood that this working group three will focus mainly on two specific aspects, lens interactions and, and coastal wetlands. So thank you for answering in which, which um, topic uh, is most interested from your side. Um, then please uh, specify which of your project deliverables and results you are the most interested in promoting uh, through this working group. So you yes. can uh, se select. Because here, as uh, during your presentation, Antoine, we have identified uh, different uh, events from, for example, TUNAP or PostBMET, where we can collaborate. But uh, 
for sure you are developing uh, different outputs or tools that uh, we we would like to to help you and collaborate and work together uh, to to spread the the outputs. Yeah. Yes, and especially because as a leader of this uh, capitalization work package, we're also very interested in in having your uh, the, the, the your deliverables and results. You we 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 can we can capitalize on mainstream also. Uh, through the capitalization uh, events we, we plan to, to organize. So thank you for your answer. Yeah. Then there is uh, uh, another question. Uh, please, um, you're invited to list which type of tools coming from your project could be integrated in the, in the catalog of tools uh, to be updated. Um, and please also indicate uh, a tentative date. Um, you may remember that the, the catalog of tools was produced uh, during the previous phase, and uh, there is a plan to, to update it um, with the new tools and new methods practices coming from the, this new phase. And of course, if you don't have uh, this information, uh, you can you can contact us uh, later on by email or. And as my colleague Gloria said, uh, we we remain, of course, available by email. So please, if you address an email to, to my colleague Gloria, I, and also Dania, Sonsoles, uh, and Serna, and Marco. Thank you for this. Maybe we can move uh, to the next section. Yeah, yeah. I think that is uh, now time yes. of um, time for a, a picture, picture and, maybe. Uh, take a picture, yeah. Take a picture first. Hello to everybody. Hi, Mireya. Hi, hello. hello. How are you? Yes, now is the time to, uh, before during the coffee break, it would be nice to take a family picture, so you can all turn on the camera, please. Do so, in order to share this meeting, okay, just, uh, when you turn on the camera, remember to also click sharing, or share, okay, okay, perfect, so, uh, well, just a smile, I do several essays, so... I think we're missing <laughs> some people still, that are not uh, activating yeah. the camera. Let's yes. wait. Okay, let's yeah. see if we can get a full mosaic. We're missing one, the, there's one in there. Carolina, yes. thank you very much. Is it fit now? Okay. Yes. What do we do? Perfect. We do like that? So just smile, look at the camera. <laughs> and, okay, and I do several essays, so don't you worry. Thank you. Okay. One, yes. Two, okay, another one. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So Thank you, Mireya. Coffee break, you have five minutes, and then we will come back. Okay, Thank you. five minutes, no more. Huh? Yeah. No more. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you.
um, welcome back. Okay, so now um, I give the floor to, to Gloria, who will continue with section section three. Thank you. Thank you, Mireya. Thank you very much. Yes. So um, I hope this short uh, break was fine. Um, right now we will go to the final part of this uh, webinar. Uh, we will focus on the main event and we have divided this section into two parts. The first part is uh, for the internal events of the uh, MBPC and this working group event and the second one for the external events. And um, here we can see an overview of the of this year, 2020. We've been working in different strategies for communication, community building, and transferring and capitalization. And here we are today, uh, validating and hoping to collaborate with you uh, on this uh, working group uh, strategy. You, you have received the fact sheet where we proposed uh, uh, an action plan and uh, Antoine and Marco uh, have, uh, have been more in detail previously. And um, yes, uh, most of you have participated in the, in the previous webinar uh, for revamping the community. And uh, we have uh, the previous webinar for the working group one on biodiversity protection and transboundary challenges. And this Friday, we will have uh, the webinar for the working group two on sustainable use of natural resources. And here you can see some of the events for this year. And I will be more in detail later on. But, uh, as you know, a biodiversity protection community is a central project and uh, for the Interreg MED program. And we are also collaborating in different outputs in, in collaboration with different horizontal projects, as for example, a summer school uh, that will take place next year in July, hopefully and an intercommunity toolbox, but also uh, we are participating in, uh, in the Green Deal uh, policy paper in collaboration with other communities. And uh, here you can see uh, the main events that uh, we plan uh, to, to organize or participate. And uh, there, is, there are the European Green Week uh, in October, the panorama uh, on the 6th uh, November 2020. Uh, this will be a, this is a named uh, Paris event and uh, it's organized by panorama and the objective is to showcase uh, different results of the whole, the whole interact uh, MET program. Uh, and the improvement uh, of policy making processes. And yes, so we have also planned uh, to participate in the MPA forum. As Dania said, uh, uh, it will be in November, and uh, she will. She has uh, been uh, this morning in the steering committee. Maybe at the end. Uh, uh, Dania, you would like to add uh, some more information, but uh, from the MBPC, from the from the community, we we would like to organize a training uh, in order to share the, um, the different uh, tools that uh, have been developed uh, previously in the previous phase, and uh, for the IUCN World Conservation Congress, I will say a bit more uh, later on. In 2021, we, we will participate in the Barcelona Convention in Turkey, and we have planned also to participate in, to, to organize um, an event in 2022. And yes, uh, next slide. Yes, this is a focus on the European Green Week. Uh, as you may know, more of, most of the events 
for this 2020 has been postponed and this is one of these. Uh, it would take place on October and we are right now working on a proposal for a workshop on race awareness on wetland ecosystems in the Mediterranean uh, and this is an opportunity to, to collaborate with other organizations and to influence uh, institutions on wetlands restoration needs. Uh, for example, Ifiginia is uh, from the Wetman Areas uh, project and it could be an opportunity to collaborate with them uh, but also with other uh, institutions. And here you can see that we, we have put that we count on you because we, the idea is to establish uh, this uh, workshop in, into three parts. The, the first one on policy efforts, the second one uh, about the role, the health and the knowledge that we have about uh, wetlands ecosystems and the third one is uh, where we would like to share um, the outputs that we, we already, that uh, has, uh, have already been developed and showcase uh, how we can uh, we can do or work for a more effective uh, wetland governance. And this is also important because, as you may know, uh, the European Biodiversity Strategy for 2030 has been published uh, recently, and this is also a specific point for protecting and restoring nature. And uh, yes, an um, European Nature Restoration Plan. Yes, uh, the ISCN World Conservation Congress has been postponed also to January 2021, and here we we plan to to participate into in different uh, ways, uh, organizing a joint campus session with the Sustainable Tourism Community, uh, focusing also in the, the tools that uh, both communities have uh, developed and uh, trying to, um, to share in the knowledge to, to build a, a more sustainable model of tourism uh, because for sure this this has an impact on biodiversity and uh, also we have planned to, to participate in a slot uh, uh, during, the, during the Mediterranean Solutions MADA stand uh, in collaboration with uh, Tour du Bala and it could be also an opportunity to showcase uh, your, your work and yes uh, Next slide. We have uh, two questions uh, for you. It is in order to know uh, which of uh, these uh, events you consider most relevant for your projects. The European Green Week, mm, the Panoramet event, um, the IUCN World Conservation Congress, the Barcelona Convention, or the event uh, that we planned for 2022, the capitalization event uh, in collaboration with Serica Inter Group. So, yes, thank you for your answers. And later on, as uh, we, we have previously said, uh, if you can suggest us uh, some other events, okay, maybe 20 seconds. You may also want to suggest one of your project events um, to have uh, some of these joint uh, products featured, so we could rather uh, we could also go towards your own project events, and uh, on top of you coming to our events. So if you want to make suggestions on on your events, you can also add them uh, as answer to the question. Yes, yes because uh, during the presentation on Santan, for example, we we have identified. Um, a technical workshop uh, from TuneUp, uh, where where it's planned to to transfer the knowledge of uh, um, a key outputs of the key output of this project. So maybe 
Maybe you know some other events where we can work together. But if not, uh, as we said, uh, we will be happy to, to to exchange with you later on by email or by different ways. Okay. So thank you for your answers. Maybe we can continue with the next slide. Thank you, Emanuele. I think we already covered those questions. Yes, yes. Thank you, Sonsoles. Yes, uh, for the external events, um, as you might know, uh, the biodiversity community has uh, a team map uh, calendar where uh, we have uh, two sections, uh, the internal events and activities of the modular project and the, the biodiversity protection community. But uh, this is also important in order to be coordinated with the with external events and the interact uh, met components in order to to improve our our way uh, to organize our calendars but and this is very important this is uh, this is also an opportunity to to help you to go further because uh, we have a, a great uh, team of communication and uh, and we can we can help you when you organize an event uh, to to spread the information. And um, yes, uh, in the previous uh, in the previous webinar, we asked uh, for uh, for your input, and uh, we received uh, some suggestions about uh, different topics that uh, you you missed. And we would like to know if um, if you find relevant these uh, these topics: coastal erosion, nature-based solutions, artificialization of the shoreline, human-wildlife conflicts in MPAs, and tourism. If yes or not, and uh, if you if you if you can tell us how we can include them in this working group or in our events. And if you have some more topics that uh, you, you would like to, to share with us uh, in order to take them into account, OK? You find them relevant for this working group? You have some answers for this? Do you have any idea, proposal, about how could we include them in our activities or events? You can also speak if you don't want to fill in the poll and you want to raise your hand or activate your microphone, feel free to do so and we'll listen to you. Yes, and your camera. Don't be shy. Oh, I was here. <laughs> Hi, Antoine. Well, when you say if yes, how could we Maybe we can in our activities event? Uh, you are referring to the, to the topics. OK. Topics you are mentioned below. OK. To the topics, yes. OK. So maybe we can. To the next slide. Thank you for your answers. And uh, if you have any questions, please. We are arriving uh, at the end of this webinar. Yes, no. Thank you for your attention. Uh, and thank you for all the speakers. Uh, now we can secure okay. some uh, some time to, to, to have a slot about on, on answers, questions and answers. Yes, and. Uh, but if not, uh, maybe I I will give the floor to Daniel in order to wrap up, and uh, later on we can we can discuss. I have maybe a little one bit more. question. Uh, it's not necessary to, to to have the answer now, but before we, if you allow me, uh, Daniel, if I may. Sure. Okay. Just a quick question addressed address to to all of you, uh, to all of us. Uh, how do you want us working closely together without bothering with many emails and, um, and webinar calls? But uh, uh, as, you, as you easily understood, uh, we need to be in contact uh, regularly and to exchange about um, the tools, practices, methods you are producing. Um, as Plan Bleu, we are already in touch with Tuna Project, and uh, I would like to thank you, to thank them um, 
for the, the webinar we, 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 well, we were able to attend in May. Uh, we now know more about um, the deliverables expected under this project. But my question is more how do you have any ideas uh, how we can be in touch regularly, uh, bilaterally or all together in order to give more, uh, I, I, I would say, um, dynamic, on, uh, but yes, about this, this working group, uh, not bothering every, everyone, but if anybody has a specific uh, ID or want to share the, the implementation of a tool, we can uh, secure, uh, you can send an email just to inform the community of this uh, working group. I don't know, it's, it's an open question. I don't know if the lead partner has an idea about this because it's also, um, it also concerns the other working group one and two. Thank you. If not, uh, maybe we can give the floor to Dania. Yes, sure. So, uh, yes, thank you. Thank you for that. I think for the last question about, um, about the ways to exchange, um, I mean, from the previous phase, I think we uh, we had a clear mechanism uh, through the working groups. Um, there are smaller groups normally. Uh, we would not, of course, take too much time. Uh, so we tend to um, to be mainly present to um, to suggest uh, at the early stage of any somehow product that we are developing, event that we are preparing for, uh, ask for interest, and based on that interest. Uh, make sure that we uh, proceed with this uh, small group in the development of the product and mainly in the, in the validation huh? of uh, any report, let's say, or uh, any uh, support to any event or contribution to, to any event. So the process is not too heavy on, uh, on the projects because they already have their own uh, somehow worries to be, uh, to be, uh, to be uh, putting time on. Uh, so the process needs to be light. So normally we have done that in the different working groups a bit differently. In some cases we have set some regular um, somehow exchanges, virtual exchanges, so webinars, Skype calls, and so on. With others it has gone through email exchanges. With others it went into small meetings whenever we were uh, around um, an interesting uh, event. Uh, together, so we will find. I think the the mechanism. We will inform you about it. Uh, nevertheless, the the mechanism to contact you is clear. Uh, individual projects. I, I want to say. So we have this um, this partner linked to uh, a modular project that we already have identified uh, each others on how we deal with that. We will stay. And for the working groups, we will be calling for uh, some regular. Uh, I would say meetings. Uh, seeing who is interested and involving you in that. So we will make sure we will be engaging you in a way. Uh, I hope this uh, this uh, got clearer, but if not, of course, we will be sending you also some further information and you can contact us with any um, suggestion, question, or um, yeah, interesting topic you would like to, to share with us. So we include it also in the activities we do. Uh, very well. So um, from my side, I think uh, I hope it was useful. Um, I hope it was informative to you. It's not the end. Uh, it's just the starting point. So uh, as, as mentioned, feel free to be in contact with us in case you have questions. I've seen very interesting uh, offers um, of uh, MPA networks to, to be willing to, uh, to write uh, some news and uh, publish it feel free. I mean, we want to be part of that process. We want to, to make um, what you want to, to show, to communicate, uh, to, to, to take it a bit wider. So, of course, all of these are, are very welcome. If you think that we could be useful also um, in some of your activities, feel free to do so. Some projects uh, wanted some technical uh, recommendations on the use of certain virtual platforms and tools to develop their virtual meetings, because that came out of the COVID as a, as a need for everyone. Uh, we have done so. We have some analysis that we have done on what type of platforms and tools uh, to do different types of settings. Is it a workshop? Is it an event? Big, small, interactive? Uh, so we have a whole assessment that was done, for example. That's something that we can easily share with you. So all of these, we, we're really open to anything that you felt as if it was interesting to you. Feel free to let us know in case 
through the pod and chat system that was not uh, still resolved for you. Uh, as next steps from, from our side, uh, yes, we will be contacting you for the upcoming uh, Green Week for people who showed interest in that to let you know uh, the concept, uh, your place uh, as well in, in such a meeting, uh, the ways we will be preparing for that. So uh, we will be very soon in touch again with you and for other products uh, on the same way. Um, yes, yeah, so I think that's it from, from my side. Uh, we still have a few questions, so I think five very short questions for you to evaluate a bit uh, how was your feeling about that meeting, whether it was useful, whether it had to deal with more things that you were expecting that we didn't deal with. Uh, all of these uh, questions and answers are very helpful for us to see how we can improve also uh, and engage you better in the upcoming event. So it would take you maximum two more minutes. We're really sorry for these 10 minutes that we took uh, more than expected, but I hope that at least they were useful to you. And once you are done, uh, I'm not sure whether Mireya, you would like to still take a final picture of the group? Yes, we can do so. Okay, so we will give one more minute and we go for a family picture. Okay, so maybe, maybe we can close the pod and uh, ask you to open your camera. To you, Mireya. Okay. No, I think that now we can just make like bye or something. So, last working group webinar we just take something mediterranean in our hands but i think that we were not prepared this time and unless you have something like green blue mediterranean at your side if not just uh, with a uh, bye bye sign it would be nice <laughs> okay i see some of you have things i cannot do it because i need both hands to take the picture so i excuse myself <laughs> okay i will wait mm -hmm. A second in case someone else say something. Okay. Oh, well, you were quite well prepared then. You need one person to have a full picture. Yeah, exactly. So, please. <laughs> See. That's a good fish. Well, how, how do you manage to keep a fish yeah, alive yeah. outside of the water? <laughs> Good achievement. Yeah, well done. Yeah. I'm not sure it is alive. No, no I'm asking. <laughs> Uh, just, just something that uh, that I forgot. Uh, we have, of course, the working group two webinar that's taking place this Friday. So some of you might be interested to to join. Uh, it will take place on Friday morning. I guess most of you would have uh, would have received a um, an invitation. But in case you didn't and you are interested, also let us know and we send you the the registration. Yeah. Sorry for this back. Okay. More pictures. I see people. Uh, Happy to take more pictures. Just look at the camera, show your element. <laughs> okay. And if not, you can say bye with the hand, so if you don't have anything. And you or both things. Both. <laughs> both. Both. Oh, that's nice. Okay. I pick another one. Okay. Great. Thank you all then. Thank you, Mireya. See you Friday. I hope. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon or talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye. Bye.